from fish that can jump over 14 blocks high to a secret trick making you climb stairs faster. Here are some 134 insane Minecraft facts you probably didn't know. End portal flames are one of the only impossible blocks to break in Minecraft, right? Wrong! Using a red mushroom plate just right, you can grow it with bone meal and use it to totally delete the frames. Desert Wells finally got a use as you can find a new block called Suspicious Sand in them. This block that can also be found in desert temples can be brushed with, you know, a brush to uncover secret items. Well, kind of. All the sand in the wells can really give you is sticks, bricks, and emeralds. So I think I'm just gonna stick to stealing villagers' crops and selling it all back to them at a profit. Luckily, though, the desert temple sand does hide a little more treasure, as you can also get TNT, gunpowder, and even diamonds. And by the way, this room looks suspiciously like a treasure room. I wonder if in the future we might find some other goodies hidden away in here. What I do like about Suspicious Sand, though, is that the item inside will slowly peek out as you brush it. I still kind of prefer how it looked in Minecraft Live, though, where instead of just breaking, you'd slowly wipe layers from the block, exposing the item inside. Have you ever noticed that the sky actually changes color during the weather fight? That's right, as soon as the fight begins, the horizon turns a deep, ashy gray, and some clouds become much darker. Too bad nobody will ever see this because we all fight the weather underground now. Like mole people. Putting carpets on top of fences lets you jump over them while keeping animals in. But did you know there's an even better way of doing this? Animals can jump over trap doors just fine going one way. But if they try to leave, they walk straight into them. This makes it 100 times easier to collect animals and get in and out your pen without 1,000 chickens escaping through the gate. In Minecraft's April Fool's update, Mojang added an item called the Ankle Monitor, which, when put on, works like the curse of binding, making you unable to take it off and slower whilst wearing it. Minecraft Hood Edition coming out in 2023. Want an easy way to find netherite? Try this out. All you need is a fire resistance potion, a few blocks, and a grindstone. After jumping into the lava, swim upwards to see through the entire thing. And ta-da! Enjoy your ban. It's no secret that Mojang is sometimes a little lazy when it comes to textures, with bedrock just being an overly saturated stone, and endstone being an inverted version of cobblestone. But I bet none of you realize that the jungle log texture is just a rotated version of the oak log. Speaking of being overpowered, though, did you know that creepers can climb ladders? I'm already terrified of getting ninja bombed by them in ravines. Why do I have to be scared of this now, too? But creepers have been hiding another secret from us, too. If they're affected by a potion effect from an arrow, or, you know, a potion, when they explode, they'll leave a lingering pool of that potion effect wherever they stood. What can you use this for? Don't ask questions! Moving on! You can actually send minecarts to the nether. All you have to do is set up train tracks leading directly to another portal. Load those babies up! When they disappear, you can go through the portal and find all the glorious minecarts you sent over. The flower, Lily of the Valley, looks the exact same from any angle you look at it through. It's sort of like a Minecraft illusion, which means the lily is always watching you. Don't kill that baby pig. You know it doesn't give you meat. Don't kill it! Here's a nice trick to try on a blind person. If you cover lava with string, nearby players won't be able to hear the lava, meaning that sucker won't even know what hit him. Oh, I'm such a great YouTuber. Subscribe, by the way. Yes, this is a call to action. The lily is watching you! Although it doesn't look it, villagers can actually wear armor. They can even wear mob heads and pumpkins, but nobody wants to see that. You can use dispensers to equip it to them, and even put enchantments on each piece of armor, including Thorn's enchantment. God, that's an embarrassing death message. Oh, and by the way, that mob head thing works on piglins too, and it's somehow even worse. Everyone knows how cowardly villagers are, especially around anything that even has a possibility of hurting them. But I bet you never noticed they actually sweat during raids. At least, I heard that sweat. They really don't have much to worry about though, because some of these villagers actually have morals? These scary ex guys called Vindicators refuse to kill baby villagers. So at least when they grow up, they can rebuild the village. <laughs> Uh, never mind. After literally 10 years of asking for it, we finally were given a cherry blossom biome. Woohoo! It's filled with the prettiest trees in the entire game, as well as these tiny flowers called pink petals. The leaves even give off a cool particle effect, just like the spore blossom. And if that's not enough, this is one of the only biomes in the game that bees can spawn in. This is paradise! If only they'd added water in these biomes so we could get places like those awesome cherry-filled rivers in Japan. And for any builders out there, these logs can be stripped or turned into pink planks that I definitely won't be building my entire house with, because I'm a man. I'm a 
my god, it's so pretty! Anyway, the Cherry Grove biome actually hides a secret you probably didn't know about. Because it usually generates around mountains, it actually spawns emeralds underground. However, the Cherry biome itself is actually pretty rare, so it might be easier to just head to a mountain anyway. <laughs> Much easier to spot too. Everybody knows that naming a mob Dinnerbone flips it upside down, but I bet you didn't know there's a second secret name that does the same thing. If you call the mob Grum with two M's instead, it'll do the same thing. This was added at the same time as Dinnerbone, so I kind of feel bad he didn't get as much attention. Poor Grum. If you're like me, you probably still managed to get lost even with a map, but if you name a banner and place it down at your base, you can right-click it with the map, and a marker will pop up showing you exactly where home is. Remember the last time you used a furnace minecart? Yeah, me neither, but there is actually a way to use them that kind of makes them useful, I guess? If you push a furnace minecart into a chest minecart, they'll actually couple together, allowing you to transfer a huge bunch of resources easily without choker boxes. It all completely falls apart the second a corner or hill appears, but hey, they've got the spirit. Breaking blocks like clay underwater is so annoying! Sure, there's the old door trick, but that's no fun compared to TNT. But Mallow, TNT doesn't work underwater! Wrong! All you need to do is place sand or gravel on top before lighting it, and it works perfectly. It barely even damages you. You can actually do the opposite as well. Placing an anvil on top of TNT before lighting it will stop it from breaking any blocks at all. It doesn't even damage the anvil. And again, you take almost no damage from the blast. And in case you don't have a big enough iron supply to waste on literally blowing up, there's a cheaper alternative in placing TNT on top of a half slab instead. For some reason, this also reduces the blast radius significantly. But unfortunately, you still take quite a lot of damage. We're all pretty aware of Minecraft's food chain now. Creepers hate ocelots, foxes hate chickens and rabbits, Mallow hates dogs, but one toxic relationship you probably don't know about is that polar bears hate foxes. It doesn't usually go too well for the polar bears, though, as foxes are way faster. And because foxes can step on powder snow just fine, the bears are sometimes baited in and get stuck. On the topic of foxes, though, I have to know. Am I stupid for not knowing this next one? Foxes don't just attack rabbits and chickens by walking up and biting them. They also sneak up and pounce on them by jumping super high into the air. What's crazier is that if they land on snow, they'll actually get stuck and shake around trying to free themselves. I swear these guys have been in the game for ages, and I've never seen this. I must be an idiot, right? Slime blocks, honey blocks, and hay bales can all be used to reduce full damage when using a drop chute. But they all have drawbacks. Instead, put a waterlogged chest at the bottom. You won't take any full damage, you don't bounce, and it doesn't slow you down. Witch huts have the ability to spawn, you know, witches. But also, each time one is generated, a black cat will also spawn inside. They do have a tendency to walk off, but this is actually one of only two ways to find this sleek variant of Kitty. The only other way is wait until a full moon and venture out into a village, where each cat has a 50% chance of spawning as this magical black version. Have you ever run out of gold for powered rails because you never collect it when you're caving? Don't worry, so has literally everybody else that plays this game, but that means there's a solution! Putting a saddled pig in the minecart makes it go much faster on iron rails. It's kind of weird because you have to press the backwards key to move forwards, but it works just fine otherwise. Piglins are primal tribal creatures and do everything together as a group. Most people know they hunt down hoglins together, but you probably didn't know that there's a small chance that they'll dance together after taking one out. In Bedrock Edition, if you name a boat in an anvil, it'll actually show up as a name tag above. Cool, right? I bet Java Edition has an equally cool mechanic. Oh, it doesn't show up. And it's gone Ooh. completely. Great! Oxalotls are up there with bees for the cutest mob in Minecraft. They come in these four normal colors, and one super rare shiny blue axolotl that's actually a reference to the Pokemon Mudkip. And speaking of fish, you kind of? Some cruel player discovered that if you take fish out of their favorite aquatic home and place them on a bunch of slime blocks, they'll start to bounce really high super fast. However, it's not likely to last long as there's a few, shall we say, occupational hazards for our bounty swimming friends. The only thing I like more than this little guy? has to be the frogs that got added in 1.19. I just wanted to show you what a seating animation looks like in slow motion. That's it. That's the fact. You know those little ghost guys called vexes that spawn in raids that are somehow more dangerous than ravagers? Well, thankfully, they're being nerfed, as their hitbox has been made much bigger, meaning you can actually hit them when you try. Oh, and their texture also got an update. They now look eerily similar to the alley. I wonder if they're supposed to be some evil version of them. That explains why alleys can be found in those cages at Pillager Outposts. Aside from the cherry wood that's being added, we're also getting a second set of wooden blocks made out of bamboo. Nine bamboo items make a bamboo block 
Park, which can be turned into everything you'd expect, but with a light green, jungly sort of feel. There's even a special bamboo mosaic block that can be made from two slabs, but I've got no clue how you'd use this in a build, so let me know if you figure that out. We also got a new decorative item called the Decorated Pot. Again, this doesn't exactly do much, but it actually looks pretty cool. You can craft it with four bricks and a diamond shape, but if you replace any of these with one of four types of pottery shard also obtained from brushing suspicious sand, one side of the block will have a picture carved into it like this. This block is super fragile though, and will break into pieces if you hit it with any tool. Sure, you can use these as a decorative item, but it also has its place as a building block, as they're just a little smaller than a regular block, allowing you to make some pretty cool patterns and pillars with them. However, I think my favorite new block has to be the chiseled bookshelf. You craft these with wood and slabs, and surprise, surprise, you can use them to store books, including enchanted books and written books, meaning you can leave hidden messages around your house, or just hide away your valuable mending books because you just know what? someone's gonna try and steal them sooner or later. But the coolest part about them is that comparators can actually detect if there's a book placed in a specific slot, meaning we can finally make one of those awesome secret bookshelf entrances. If anyone knows about it, they'd have to know exactly which book in exactly which bookshelf unlocks the door, letting you hide some seriously secure secrets. We've also got a new setting that allows you to see all the secret hidden creative items. This includes command blocks, all the different types of light level blocks, which are gonna be super useful for builders, and even the secret debug stick item that lets you change the form of any block you want by just clicking on it. Did you know, if you splash a potion of poisoning onto a creeper, then let them explode, you'll end up seeing a lingering poison effect? This can be used for blowing up your friend's base, and then finishing their dogs off. Thank me later, you monster. If you're near an ocean with your friend, have them crouch down in front of the water and pay attention to their name tag. If you look closely, you can see the water is transparent, allowing you to see anything you want. So if your friend's got a secret base, we will find it, and we will kill your dogs again. Talking about the ocean, if you take an iron golem and try to sink them, you'll realize they literally can't drown. This means they can stay at the bottom of the ocean for years without taking a single hit of damage. Man, that's just sad. What? This can't be said for snow golems, though. They don't even get to enjoy a swim. Man, that just feels wrong. Are you one of those weirdos that prefers using donkeys over horses for the extra storage space? First of all, why are you using horses in the first place? It's 2023, man, get Elytra! But secondly, llamas are a way better option. They can have up to 15 inventory slots and form groups of 10 that follow each other around. Using shulker boxes, you can transport up to 4,000 stacks of blocks with you. That's this many blocks, more than you'd ever need. And if you need another reason to make the switch to llamas, check this out. While horses and donkeys just sink like rocks when you try to ride them in water, llamas can swim. You still can't control them or anything, but if you need a fancy pool float or something, llamas work perfectly. Fireworks can be used for a bunch of things these days, but I bet you never thought of making a cannon with them. That's right, fireworks launched from dispensers actually do damage to mobs, meaning firework crossbows are out, and this is the new best way to take out mobs. Piglins now can drop their skulls, just like zombies and skeletons, and they're way cooler than any other mob head too. The method to get to them is still blowing them up with a charged creeper, except a little harder, as you can't actually bring piglins to the overworld without them turning into zombies. I'd say it's worth it though, as you can put one on your head and his ears will actually flap while you walk around. Mob heads also got another really cool use that I don't think anyone was expecting. If you place one on top of a note block, the block will play a random sound that that mob makes. And yes, this works with redstone, so you've got a new way to drive your friends insane! Ever thought it's annoying that you can only ride a few of the mobs in Minecraft? Well, fear not! The slash ride command that's just been added lets you spawn in and ride on literally any mob you want. Ew, except for that. Don't do that. If you stack minecarts on a singular rail, you can create a nuclear bomb! The minecarts will glitch out and move on their own. Try getting rid of the rails? Well, the minecarts don't care! In fact, it'll keep on going and blow up an entire village if it wants. What a rebel. While night vision is usually very useful, if you splash yourself with a night vision potion in the end, everything will instantly turn pink. Thanks, guys. That helped a lot. Well done. The Minecraft soundtrack changes depending on what time of day it is, meaning if you want a certain soundtrack to play, Play, just use the command and change it back to the time of day you remember it playing at. Oh man, this track is so beautiful. <laughs> 
Who said it today? Who? Huh? I know karate. Because soul sand isn't a full block, you can't really place falling blocks on top of it. Or at least without having your blocks turn into fragile block entities. If you've ever created a staircase, you'd realize how annoying it is to have to go up and down and back up again. Who invented stairs? I will fight you. But there's a way out of the never-ending pain. Because if you place a torch on the block you're using, you can place a block on the side. And if you keep recycling your torches, you'll soon enough have a really long staircase. Just don't look at it from the side. If you have a pet axolotl and don't have a name tag to make him your pet, you can scoop him up with a bucket and literally put him into an anvil. But don't worry, we aren't gonna murder him. If you're in a village raid but don't manage to kill all the raiders, that's a cool way to easily find them. If you ring the village bell and wait a few seconds, all remaining raiders within a 40 block radius will all light up with a glowing effect. This one is already semi-known, but hey, your boy's gotta eat. Did you know not all skeletons hold the bow in the same hand? In fact, 11% of the skeletons are left-handed, while 89% are right-handed. Mojang paid close attention to detail here, as this is the exact proportional percent in real life. If you drop a sword near a fox, they can actually pick it up. This means if a fox is holding a sword while attacking, it'll deal the same damage as the sword, making it incredibly overpowered. Camels are by far the coolest passive mob we've ever got. Not only can you ride them with a saddle, but they're so tall that zombies and spiders can't touch you while you're on one. You can also dash while riding them. And best of all, two people can ride them at once. The only drawback to camels is that sometimes they'll get bored, lie down on the floor, and refuse to move. <laughs> Just like me. Honey blocks are so sticky that mobs like villagers can't actually jump off them, meaning you can use them to hold them in place. And if you've spent ages pushing villagers around or using boats to move them, I'm about to blow your mind. You can't bait villagers around with seeds or carrots, but you can get them to follow you simply by having a chat with them. It seems they're so excited to trade with you that they just won't leave you alone, letting you bring them pretty much wherever you want. And if anything was to uh, happen to your villagers, don't use potions of weakness to heal them. Instead, you should use tipped arrows with a crossbow. If you have a high enough piercing level, you can shoot through multiple villagers and then pick the arrow up after allowing you to cure hundreds of villagers with just one arrow. Swift Sneak is already an amazing enchantment, but did you know that if you run and jump into your sneak instead of just sneaking normally, you'll sneak around 33% faster? I really like saying sneak, did you tell? Speaking of sneaking, I just really wanted to say that, you can create secret ladders out of powder snow that only you can use. It's literally as simple as placing a column of powder snow somewhere and chucking on some leather boots and only you will be able to climb it. What item do you think is used in the most crafting recipes in the game? Wood? Maybe sticks? How about diamonds? Turns out it's actually iron ingots. They're used in 34 different recipes, which is more than anything else. Well, kind of. With the introduction of chiseled bookshelves in 1.20, wooden planks are now also used for 34 recipes in Java edition. Riveting. What do you think the best item for fighting mobs is? Axes maybe? Some people prefer swords or bows, but you're all wrong! Boats are actually extremely powerful, as you can just chuck one down and completely immobilize any mob you want. They even stop Endermen from teleporting. You can name a chest in an anvil and the name will actually show up in the GUI. It even keeps its name when you break it, unlike any other block in the game. No matter how high they fall from, cats will never take full damage. You can send them all the way from build limit to bedrock and they'll walk away like nothing happened. Conversely, dogs do take damage. And anvil damage! It's just so beautiful. Zombified piglins are terrifying to fight in the nether, but if you manage to get a weapon powerful enough to kill them in one hit, they won't get mad, and you can take them out one by one. Flower forests are one of the prettiest biomes in the game, and one of the easiest places to farm all the different dyes too. But strangely, the flowers don't actually generate in random places. Each area in this biome can only spawn a specific flower, which means you can map it out using bone meal to create a really cool effect. Bees in Minecraft actually work really similar to how they do in real life. When they sting you, they don't just lose their stinger and end up dying shortly after. They actually leave it inside you. It's easiest to see when you turn invisible and ugh, why are they adding tweezers to the game? You can get floating Minecraft tracks by placing them on trap doors and flipping them down. Aside from this just looking really weird, you can make some pretty crazy traps with this, as all the rails disappear at once when anything updates them. While testing this, I realized you can actually walk underneath trap doors even though you're way taller than this gap, and your head even sticks 
breaks into the trap door. Yo, Mallow, is that a fresh cut? No, 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 please! Shulkers are one of the most mysterious mobs in Minecraft. I can't even figure out what they're supposed to be. But it turns out if you throw an invisibility potion at one, all is revealed. The Shulker's shell disappears, leaving the Shulker itself floating in midair. I'm still no closer to understanding what on earth this thing is, but I guess he's, like, cute? It's common knowledge now that villagers are the best way to farm items, but it takes so long to cure them. But it turns out if you place iron bars near the zombie villager, you can actually speed it up a bunch. The wiki says this works with beds too. But when I tested this, it seemed like it was fake. But let me know in the comments if it works for you. Speaking of beds, did you know that there used to be a sky dimension planned for Minecraft? It was supposed to be a magical realm in the sky that you could access through dreams. Each time you went to sleep, there would be a chance you'd wake up here instead. And for Unfortunately, this idea was eventually replaced by the end. But I'd love to see them bring back this idea. While you were busy having sniper duels or hiding away praying they wouldn't see you, skeletons have been hiding a dark secret. Okay, it's not that dark, but around 11% of them are actually left-handed and hold their bows differently to the rest. Apparently, this is to mirror the amount of real people who are left-handed. Also, even though wither skeletons can't spawn naturally with a bow, they still have a line of code that lets them shoot fire arrows when they're given one with commands. Weird, right? One of the best features Mojang is adding in 1.20 is the new armor trims. You can find pattern templates in chests all over our world and then apply them with different colors on our armor. They're found in places like bastions and woodland mansions, but they're also dropped by the Elder Guardian. They're pretty rare, but luckily you can use diamonds to duplicate so you've got enough for all of your armor. Mojang also decided that netherite was somehow too easy to obtain and added a netherite upgrade template which you need to use every time you upgrade a tool or piece of armor. And yes, you need a new one every time meaning that's an extra seven diamonds every time you upgrade something. Please subscribe so I can afford this. Creepers are one of the oldest mobs in the game, and they haven't got any less terrifying. In fact, in one of the 1.20 snapshots, they somehow got even scarier. Somehow their code got messed up, and they wouldn't make a noise or even flash before they blew up, meaning they could just sneak up and explode before you even knew they were there. Oh, also, there was another really strange and kind of cruel bug where sitting cats would just sink down in water instead of standing up and swimming to safety like they do now. I'd be totally okay with this if it was dogs, but not my sweet kitties. You know how the menu screen kind of rotates around like this? Apparently, this can make some people dizzy. So Mojang added this setting that lets you change the speed or even turn it off completely. I can't be the only person who thinks this looks really cursed. Hey, by the way, does anyone else think the new world creation screen looks awful? I've been playing Minecraft for 10 years now and they did not need to change this. Honey blocks have a crazy feature barely anybody knows about. They're actually just a little bit smaller than a normal block meaning you can shoot arrows between them. Thank me later, fortress builders. Dolphins are one of the smartest animals in the world, and it's no different in Minecraft. If you give a dolphin enough fish, it'll actually begin to swim to the nearest underwater chest as thank you for feeding it. Endermen are already one of the most creepy and powerful mobs in the game. They absolutely didn't need another buff to make them even stronger, but they got exactly that. Usually an enderman will just teleport out of the way of an arrow or other projectile. First, if they've got nowhere to teleport to, the arrow will just bounce off like it's nothing. Cheaters. Luckily, there is a way to make Endermen completely powerless. Yeah, sort of. Sure, you can just place water at your feet, but that's old news. If you accidentally trigger an Enderman by looking into its eyes, don't look away. For some reason, Endermen won't move at all as long as you hold eye contact. And what do you do from here? Uh, good question. Moving on. To cure a zombie villager, you need a splash potion of weakness and golden apple. And a bed? Apparently being near to a bed helps to speed up the process. Not sure why that works. Well, I can think of a few reasons. <laughs> the axolotl is probably the cutest animal in Minecraft. But did you know there's an axolotl so rare, just one in 1,200 axolotls spawn this way. The blue axolotl is the rarest mob in Minecraft. Would you look at that little guy? Guy. Huh, you thought I was gonna kill it for comedic effect? I'm totally above that. I lied! Sand or gravel counters entities when falling down, meaning dropping it into a portal will build a nice little sandcastle. Not only that, but you can do the same with lit TNT and even dripstone. If you hit a zombie piglin next to a nether portal in the overworld, an extra zombie piglin can spawn from the nether, even if one isn't nearby. So how does that work, Mojang? Hmm? Care to explain yourself on that one? Your trident will always come back as you have the loyalty enchantment. However, if you're in higher inventory is full while throwing it, it won't come back to you and will leave you forever. Or it will
or do whatever this is, which probably counts as some kind of assault. That's a lawsuit waiting to happen. If you feed a cookie to your parrot in Minecraft, they will die. No joke. I feel bad for the kid that figured that out. Well, this wasn't always in the game. Mojang later realized cookies are actually toxic to parrots, so change the game to be more realistic. So if your friend gets a new parrot, you know what to bring. When you leave a rejoiner world, you get a couple seconds of invincibility. So if you find yourself in a bit of a spicy situation, you can leave and rejoin over and over and swim to safety like you're made out of obsidian. The shield is one of the most overpowered items in the whole game. It can block fireballs for God's sakes. But did you know that if you go through a portal while holding right click, you'll be permanently blocking in the next dimension, letting you sprint and attack while literally invincible. You can send secret messages with skulk blocks. Skulk usually spreads to stone blocks blocks when it absorbs experience, but it won't take over blocks made with slabs. So simply write some letters out with slabs and find a way to cover it. Sometimes it can be difficult to tell just how low durability your tools are while mining, but if you hit F3 and H at the same time, you'll get the exact number of blocks it can mine left, you nerd. A campfire smoke is kind of pathetic. It only lasts for about 10 blocks before fading away. However, if you place a hay bale beneath it, it'll use that extra fuel to create a 25 block high smoke stream. It's obvious Obviously super cute that foxes can pick up and steal your items, but did you know they can actually use them too? If you try killing a fox while it's holding a totem, it won't die and just runs away from you like the monster you are. Luckily, this feature doesn't work on dogs. <laughs> foxes can also eat chorus fruit if given the opportunity and presumably get really confused after. You can go upstairs much faster if you've got auto jump enabled. Finally, maybe a reason to use this. Every Minecraft player's worst nightmare is having a creeper sneak oh, in or spawn in their base and having it blow up everything. But to make this a little less disastrous, you can waterlog your chest to make them blast resistant. Speaking of, if you're looking for a block to build your TNT base farms out of, waterlogged leaves might be for you. They're totally blast resistant and super easy to get a hold of. Just be careful you don't accidentally flood your redstone. Ever see this mob? Because if you have, you're one of the lucky ones. This is called the Clux Room. And yes, it drops mushrooms. This mob was released exclusively for Minecraft Earth. And with a 2% chance of naturally spawning, you don't want to lose this guy. But mushy? Mushy, why? If you're in Minecraft Bedrock Edition and you catch on fire, don't panic! Just craft a campfire, and you can light it for completely free just from standing on it. Oh man, what a good trade-off. Now that's what I call making the best out of a bad situation. In the early versions of Minecraft InDev, you could stack up to 99 items in Minecraft. This was later changed by Notch to the iconic 64 items you can hold today. Hey, you do you, bro. Everyone knows if you hit a zombie piglin in a swarm, it's not gonna be a fun time for you. However, if you manage to one-shot that same zombie piglin with an overpowered weapon, all of the piglins will get confused and stop targeting you, allowing you to finish them off one by one. Hey, it's fine, they're zombies, so die piglins. Chests usually can't be opened when they've got a block above them, so explain how this works. It's actually just a stair placed backwards. This also works with any other block that's not just as big as a normal block, such as farmland or path blocks, and leaves you a bunch of new opportunities to hide away your goodies. Skeletons can usually see you from about this far. It's around 16 blocks, which, to be fair, is pretty good for a life form with bones for eyeballs. But if you chuck on a mob head like a zombie or skeleton skull, this distance gets much smaller and allows you to get as close as eight blocks away without them seeing you. The only problem is that now I can't see anything. Speaking of skeletons, there's actually a super clever way to get music discs that I bet you didn't know. The arrows will turn to fireballs when shot through lava and can even light TNT. This means you can collect a bunch of creepers in a pit and blow them all up with a skeleton like this and end up with dozens of music discs almost instantly. Hitting a mob with a channeling trident in a thunderstorm makes possibly the worst noise in the game. It's so loud! Luckily, this crazy lightning generator isn't quite as loud. You can make it with a piston, lightning rod, and channeling trident, and having a bunch of them allows you to do, well, not much really. But I guess you can trap your friend in a box like this and give them an electrifying experience. <laughs> Did you know that you can actually totally skip the ender dragon fight? By building a simple flying machine like this, you can fly all the way to the outer islands without so much as touching the ender dragon, allowing you to raid as many end cities as you want for all the loot you could ever dream of. However, the only way out is, uh, down there. So do this at your own risk, I guess. Snow golems will die almost instantly underwater, while iron golems will sink but just kinda chill? This is already strange enough, but it gets even weirder when you realize you can actually spawn snow golems underwater, but not iron golems. But while we're down 
on here. Here's another cool underwater fact that might even save your life. Next time you find yourself stranded outside at night, swarmed by mobs and unable to sleep, try heading into a river or ocean. You'll be able to chuck a bed down and sleep just fine. You can even breathe down here for some reason. Everyone knows that the weather is immune to arrows in its second phase, but I bet you didn't know that fireworks will still damage it, letting you sit back and relax as you watch the show. Oh crap, wait, it can still hit me! Baby foxes might be the cutest mob in the entire game, which is why I'm sorry that I have to show you this next fact. And some older versions are actually so adorable and tiny, and if they find themselves in water, their mouth is actually underwater, and they'll end up drowning. Poor thing. If you're ever being chased by a mugger and quickly want to hide your diamonds, just throw them in grass pass. If you place hoppers under the grass covering, the diamonds will automatically transport into them, making your escape smooth, calculated, and absolutely foolproof. And he's found the hoppers, hasn't he? Oh, come on! Here's a useless fact you didn't know. Wearing a creeper mask reduces the chance of a creeper spotting you by 50%. But don't get too cocky, as they still explode! In Snapshot 15W31A, Mojang pretty much added one of the dumbest things possible. Usually, to respawn the Ender Dragon, you need Ender Crystals. Pretty hard to obtain. That makes sense, right? Well, for this snapshot, you literally could build a clay creeper face, and the dragon would respawn. Yeah, I'm not even joking. I'm baffled. Bamboozled. If an iron golem is low on health, you can heal them by tapping on them with an iron ingot. Don't confuse this with hitting them with an iron ingot, as that will certainly end up killing them, and we don't want that. If you've ever tried building a railroad before, you would have definitely come across a train turn that looks something like this. Well, if you take a look at the corner of the train track, it actually looks very similar to an iron pickaxe. Bet you didn't know that! When a player crafts their first enchantment table and enchants their first weapon, assuming you pick the lowest enchant level on a bow and arrow, the first enchant will always be power one. <sighs> what a useless fact! I don't want power one! <laughs> Ass one. The Sniffer is another new mod that's been added, and oh my god, what is it? Seriously, like, what is that? I, I've got no idea. It can only be spawned in with eggs obtained from archaeology, and just, like, sniffs, I guess? What a surprise! At least it looks cute, though, even though all it can do is find these torch flower seeds. Wouldn't it be cool if instead of just seeds, it could also discover other items, like diamonds? Or would that just be overpowered? In Bedrock Edition, though, you can actually put these absolute units in boats, and even flip them upside down with a dinner bone name tag. Ah, now I understand what they're for. Also, you can actually breed two sniffers together with the torch flowers they find to create a baby snifflet. Yes, the babies are called snifflets. Snifflets! Speaking of, the torch flower is actually the first flower we've ever had that is grown with seeds. Unfortunately, right now, all it can do is make orange dye and look pretty, which I think is a huge missed opportunity for another plant-based light source like the glowberries. It's literally called the torch flower, but also snifflets! Only other use for torch flowers is to make into suspicious stew. And will give you night vision for just a few seconds when you eat it. By the way, did you know that Mojang added suspicious stew as a way to teach people that the lily of the valley flower is poisonous? Cool idea, but this red mushroom you put in the stew is also super poisonous in real life. And I can eat it just fine. Might want to look at that one again, Mojang. The last item being added in the 1.20 update that we know of right now is the hanging sign. These can be made out of any type of stripped wood along with two chains. And, well, do I really have to explain what they do? They can be placed on the bottom or the side of a block and are perfect for adding that tiny bit of extra detail to a build. Or, you know, for signing things. The only bad thing about them is that there's a much lower character limit on them. But it's fine because I've got just enough room to tell you to subscribe!